welcome to a 2022 makes review video. I'm Gemma, welcome. Uh, I am the designer, dyer, maker, tutor behind the Midnight Diary, hence the channel named from the Mid uh, Tales from the Midnight Diary. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you are returning, welcome back. Um, this is going to kind of set the scene for 2023. So if you're one of my new subscribers who've joined me over Vlogmas, and thank you so much for all the lovely support you gave, I can't believe still that I completed Vlogmas. I'm just going to leave that there for a second, because if you know me, you know. <laughs> um, I completed Vlogmas. I did a video for every single day from the 1st of December to Christmas Eve. And I got them up. I mean, granted, the last couple went up on Christmas Day, but it was still Christmas. So yeah, I'm uh, astounded. I had so much fun. It was really fun recording bits of Robin's advent because obviously he was only six weeks old last year, so he didn't get that much out of it. And it was really fun sharing festive bits and a little bit of real life with you as well. And I'm really glad that most of you seem to really enjoy it. So if you're a new subscriber, welcome. Um, and if you're just stumbling upon this channel for the first time, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, everyone's welcome, basically. Um, yeah, excuse the slightly bedraggled look. Um, there are lots of exciting things in the works that I cannot talk to you about just yet. So I'm going to ask you to stay on those tenter hooks for a little while longer um but all will be explained i look slightly bedraggled we've just traveled back from devon visiting family yesterday today is monday the 2nd of january it's bank holiday happy bank holiday happy new year um and uh so i'm a bit tired and we are in the middle of a very intense spring clean and declutter um and we've literally got today to do it because mr midnight returns to work tomorrow and on wednesday robin and i are traveling up to see my lovely friend jude who's also robin's godfather um who is the dye behind strength dye works we're going to go and stay with him for a couple of weeks and just help out basically so we're really looking forward to that and there will be videos um to do with like hopefully some vlogging going on as well because i hope to visit a couple of yarn shops while i'm up there anyway this video is not a regular podcast. I do do a video podcast, um, semi, totally irregularly, what am I trying to say? Um, I occasionally now do a video podcast about making. I did Vlogmas, um, do some vlogs, do some tutorial videos. This is a review of everything I made in 2022, and there's quite a lot, and I don't have much memory on my phone, I don't have much light, and I don't have much time, because Robin is currently napping, and we've got a lot to do. So, I had a goal, um, oh, I should probably say, <laughs> as well as hand dyeing yarn, I knit and crochet and sew. And that's what this is about. Sorry, this is really haphazard, isn't it? Um, as I say, if, if you're new, then this is pretty good. It gives you a level of what to expect. I had a goal of making 20 things in 2022. Sorry, completing 20 things in 2022. Some of them were um, whips from Works in Progress from 21. I achieved, drumroll please, 39. 39. I'm pretty sure it's 39. I'm not brilliant at updating my project. There is a possibility I will find more. So that involves, that involves <clears throat> 10 pairs of socks, 17 hats, two cowls or shawls, two pairs of gloves, one pair of mittens, one blanket and six garments. Um, <laughs> I just, I cannot believe how well that's gone. So I'm going to take you through each category not necessarily in completion order, and I also don't have any of the things to hold up and show you here. You are just gonna have to deal with pictures flashing up on the screen as well of varying levels of professionalism, um, because lots of the stuff is elsewhere and I'm a very busy woman. <laughs> <coughs> so let's go through the socks. And we're gonna start initially, at the start of the year, I finished my dad's Hollyberry socks. I had hoped that these would be ready for Christmas. Unfortunately, they were not. I just about snuck them in in time for his birthday. Um, so Hollyberry is a Christmas colourway by West Yorkshire Spinners. It's a self-striping yarn and it's available from Orchid Yarn Imperials. I just used my basic vanilla sock pattern, which is available for free on my Payhip store and you can download it from the Yarn Dispensary website. I'll put the links down below. For my dad, I did a 64 stitch cuff. I'll give the measurements just once for each person uh, as I go through. But for all of these socks, I just used my fuss-free vanilla sock pattern. 
following that I swiftly finished another pair of adult socks this time it was my very first hand dyed self striping from Helen of Giddy Yarns and I used her Robin colorway that I snapped up Robin Redbreast that I snapped up on a friend's D stash to make Mr Midnight a pair of socks my, our son is called Robin and so obviously it had to happen and from the leftovers I made little Robin my little Robin his very own Giddy Robin socks too uh, my husband, I did a 64 stitch cuff as well and again used my vanilla pattern. Following swiftly on from that were my dad's wildflower socks. This is a Winwick Mum colourway which isn't so much self-striping as self-patterning. It does fall into stripes but they're not even and it was a really nice change from some of the commercial yarn I've used. It is again by West Yorkshire Spinners and is really lovely to work with. Um, it will come as no surprise to hear that a little later in the year I did indeed make Robin some matching wildflower socks. I got these finished ready for to give to my dad for Robin's birthday trip when my dad came down to visit um, and I finished Robin's uh, on time as well actually but we didn't get a picture of them together which is a real shame because they were never in the same room at the same time however I will be seeing my dad when I go to Scotland so watch this space watch my Instagram. I love making for friends and loved ones and I was really pleased to be able to finally finish my friend Julia's um, 80s tree lights socks. So the 80s tree lights is a colourway. I used the sparkle base from Tree Hooked, and 80s tree lights was her Christmas colourway a couple of years ago. Julia had made herself a pair, but had had a bit of a washing accident, um, and so I wanted to make her some. So I bought her a skein of yarn for one Christmas, and I said, "Now give it back, because next Christmas." was well, so next Christmas you're gonna have your socks. So I eventually gave them to her in July. So there was Christmas in July. <laughs> Um, and our friend Laura got Julia to pose for these pictures lying flat on her back on the floor with her legs up against the wall and now whenever I see this picture I just see the other pictures of, of Laura and Julia just sort of lying on their backs um, in the flat above the shop it really gives me a giggle so when you see those beautifully posed sock pictures and you think how do you do that you do it lying on your back so back to dad now and I did him a pair of hand dyed socks um, my shop, the yarn dispensary the shop I manage, it's not mine, um, has a guest dyer every quarter and um, Marcus Fiberpunk was our guest dyer again uh, for, I can't think of when it was, I think it might have been summer uh, this year and I sent my dad a picture of um, the sock snake that we had made, Jude cranked for us on his circular sock machine and if you want to know what circular sock machine Jude of Stranded Dialects has, it's an Erlbacher Gearheart Speedster. If you Google it, it comes up. So he cranked the yarn for us into like a big tube, a sock snake, and we hung it up in the shop. So I sent my dad pictures of said snake and asked him to choose which one he would like, and he selected the constructed peacock. I say that like it was easy. There was lots of back and forth thing. There were pictures, like screenshots with drawings on and it was oh but anyway finished those um got them sent up to him in time for christmas they have arrived and i immediately cast on robin's um deconstructed peacock socks because my dad's requested that anytime i knit him socks robin gets the spares to make socks for him i didn't have quite enough so it was julia to the rescue who has a skein of the constructed peacock which actually i had here a second ago here it is here it is in the cake and Helen and Vic caked it up for us and I pinched what I needed off of it, which was about four, about four grams. Okay, we're nearly there for socks. I then managed to sneak in a pair of socks for my husband for this year for Christmas. I wanted them to be his Christmas Eve socks. I finished them on Christmas Day, so it was close enough. I used the Robin colourway, surprise, surprise which is another Christmas colourway from West Yorkshire Spinners. Again, I used a 64 stitch cast on, same as for my dad with the deconstructed peacock, and I used my fuss free vanilla sock pattern. It's my go-to, I never really use anything else. And finally, sneaking in at about three minutes to midnight, I finished Robin's first Regia socks. These have been on the go for quite a while, and I was under the impression that a 25 gram ball would be enough to make socks for my son, who is uh, 14 months old on Thursday, slightly scary, um, and uh, unfortunately they weren't and we were on holiday in Devon and it was coming up to midnight 
and I thought do I wait until I get back in the middle of January to work and get another ball of this yarn I thought no I want the win I want to finish so I grabbed the nearest scrap yarn that was beside me and it was left over of my hand dyed yarn in the Myra colorway which is one of the first colorways that I ever sold um, it is still one of my most popular I don't think I'm ever going to retire it <laughs> and I did the part of the foot and the toe in that and I, I don't know it kind of looks cute there we go so yeah I need about 30 grams I think for Robin's socks now which considering I only need 50 grams for mine is a bit mind-boggling but there we are so that is it 10 pairs of socks let's move on to talking about hats now hats kind of got me across the finish line with regards to um meeting my target of 20 projects and as you can see I wanted to finish 20 I finished 38 17 of these were hats if it wasn't for these hats I would very nearly have not made it so I'm going to start by talking about the more interesting ones first of all and ones that I didn't make a gazillion of um so the Kinsey Beanie I think I'm pronouncing that correctly um is designed by Cat Crafty Knits, who's a Devon-based knitwear designer who is absolutely taking the knitwear design world by storm now. It's brilliant. Um, and I made this for my mother out of my merino cashmere nylon Aran base that I dyed in the colourway peacock for my mother-in-law who loves teals and blues. And she was wearing it actually all Christmas when we were out walking, which was just such, I got such a kick out of it seeing her still wearing it absolutely loved it it was brand new techniques to me the kind of slip stitch cable thing going on um was really good fun the pinwheel cast on i had never done before i was a little bit scared of it mostly because other people had told me it was difficult um but cat actually produces and you get access to it through the patterns really good tutorials for how to do it so i'd highly highly recommend it i think i was a bit too tight because the um because they, uh, it's, it's got a little bit of a point at the crown and I think that's down to me because certainly no one else as I've seen has done that. Um, that said, I never blocked it. But the increase is really clever as well, the way they just work with the pattern. Then I made a fairly plain and simple hat out of West Yorkshire Spinners uh, Retreat. It was a three colour hat. I used colours that I used in the cowl. I did the cowl first and you'll see that shortly. Um, it's just texture, I left it plain without a pom-pom and it's featured quite well in the window. Then it was the pumpkin hat. I was inspired by um, the lovely Jess of Ginger Twist Studios up in Edinburgh who made a pumpkin hat for her wee Molly and I thought that my wee Robin needed one as well. So I grabbed some uh, Aran yarn from Stash, held it double to make a chunky yarn and I used a pattern from Susan B. Anderson. Again, I'll try and link that below if I can remember. It was really cute. I think I could have done with doing the next size up or maybe the next needle size because it actually is very snug on Robin. Um, he's got a little bit of wear out of it, but he certainly won't be wearing it next autumn. But it was fun to do and he looks super cute. The, the final exciting hat that I want to talk to you about is um, the Croft Colourwork hat. I am still relatively new to colourwork. I did... Um, a dog jumper for Magnus a couple of years ago when he was little. I've done some mittens and um, I've done a simple colour work jumper, uh, the world's simplest colour, I don't know anyway. So I've done a little bit of colour work but I'm still relatively new to it. And this was my first colour work hat and I loved every minute of it. The only reason it took me as long as it did was because I made the mistake of trying to work on it at Robin's birthday and we were in a very poorly lit room um, at one of the flats above the shop. Um, the lighting in that room is not particularly good and I used the wrong colour because I was using two greens that were quite close to each other um, and I used the wrong colour and then had to unpick it and oh it was just a thing. But I eventually finished it um, and we put a teal pom-pom on it and it just looks super cool. I love it. Then we get onto the hats that really saved the day. I um, designed two hats. One for a course, 90 minute hat, um, knit a chunky hat in 90 minutes, um, which actually was really popular. And we had uh, a few students sign up for that. And I started off with um, a ball of super chunky, which was big wool from Rowan 
it's very simple it's worked in the round i believe it's already up for free on my pay hip store um, and it's called the 90 minute hat rib stocky stitch crown decreases done nothing much to say about that uh, so i made one two i made six of those i made a bright yellow one uh, a lipstick colored one one that's called glum <laughs> which is kind of a gray oatmeal white hot and I've just called it red, it's not called red at all, um, the colourways from Rowan. So you see pictures of most of those here. Um, I didn't take pictures of all of them because we were actually making them to sell at um, the Fashion Festive Market for the first time the shop was having a stand outside. Then the second hat I designed, because I was getting a little bit bored of doing these ones, was the Garter Marbini and I need to check that I haven't stolen that name from someone else. Um, I know Kat of Kat's Crafty Knits does a lot with Garter. Um, she's got like the Garter Squish. So I just need to double check. Um, and that pattern hasn't been written up yet but it does come in a couple of different sizes. One for Mr Midnight and then I made Robin a matching one. And I also made one as a gift. But anyway, let me start show you the one that started it off. And it was a kind of latte colour and cream. Um, so here's a dodgy picture of me <laughs> at work and that was the one that started it all and I only made one in time for the market and someone snapped it up and bought it, a young person who just looked absolutely fabulous in it. And so there we are. So then I proceeded to make one in pinks, so a hot pink and a pale pink, greys, a grey blue and then you can see these ones because the grey blue, I did a smaller version because my husband likes a pint hat in the grey blue and Robin's is also in the grey blue but I ran out of the blue right at the very end so I had to finish in all grey. I doesn't notice too much and they both look super cute um, out and about in Devon wearing their hats. <laughs> I finished um, Alan's for Christmas Day and I finished Robin's before we left for Devon so they both had nice warm cosy hats to wear on our wintry walks. And the final one I made was on the 27th of December in the car, on the 28th in the car on the way down to Devon and it was my uh, brother-in-law's girlfriend um, and I made it in pale pink and grey. I really recommend that pattern, I made it up myself so of course I would. It's going to come out um, along with a cowl pattern and some mittens and things and I'm hoping to release that in January at some point. If not I might hold on to it until late summer so it's ready for winter but we shall see. Okay moving on to cowls and shawls. Uh, the only cowl I made was the West Yorkshire Spinners Cowl and Retreat. I can't remember the name of it, I think it's Medita and it matches the hat that I made um, and the picture again is slightly dodgy but it's from the shop window. I also finished and this was my absolute triumph this year, I finished the Slip Stravaganza Mystery Knit Along which was the Mystery Knit Along for West Knit, Stephen West in 2020 and I finished it in 2022 after the 2022 MCAL had finished but I love it, I wear it all the time, I've not quite sewn all the ends in, I've not blocked it but I was just so thrilled to get that off the needles. I felt completely lost afterwards because it had been a part of my life for so long. What do I do without it? Um, yeah, love it. So excited. On to gloves. Now there are going to be a lot more of these in the near future, so get used to them. I was watching Penrose Knits, lovely Laura Penrose, her Vlogmas. Love her Vlogmas. Just gives me all the feels. And it's a nice mix of festiveness. She's fantastic at cinematography um, but also there's some reality in there as well which I really like. Anyway Laura Knit Penny Gloves by Petite Knit as gifts and I really liked them and I thought I wanted to try them and I wanted to make them as a gift for our dog walker and so I made the first pair and they were so simple and I was so thrilled with them. My one criticism is they only come in one size and it's paid for pattern which is fine I would have liked to see it in more than one size because they are quite tight um, and I've got friends that I would like to make them for for whom this size wouldn't work I don't think but yeah so I used my hand dyed yarn held together with a strand of the little grey girls hand dyed silk mohair and I just loved the effect that came up I loved it so much I did it all over again <laughs> no I cast on another pair for my other brother-in-law's girlfriend for Christmas just had a little check of the time there um, I've got 30 minutes available on my um, memory on my phone 
which I record this on and I feel like I've been talking for a long time and my coffee's getting cold. Hold on. I've also made a pair of mittens. These are the World Simplest Mittens by Tin Can Knits and they are for my son and I made them using the leftovers from one of the other projects I used and made this year. Um, so I used Rowan Superwash Merino Worsted and I'm not sure what the colourway is called but I call it Sage Green and it's really nice. It's a worsted weight yarn as it suggests and the pattern by Tin Can Knits once again does all the sizes and all the weights and it's a free pattern. Highly recommend. Link down below. And I also knit an eye cord, which felt like it was going to take a bazillion years and never, ever end um, to hold them together. And these were to replace the mittens that Jude made for him when he was born because he was finally too big for them. The big difference is that these ones have thumbs. My son has thumbs. He has mittens with thumbs in. How did you get that big? How did that happen? <sighs> it's been quite an emotional week. Um, especially watching him with family members and watching him try and walk. He's almost walking completely independently now. He's not quite done it, but his favourite thing is to like toddle up, to crawl up to one of his grandparents and um, grab their hands and make them do laps around the kitchen. It was it was lovely. Um, there's lots of things he's been doing that are just very grown up and I feel a little bit emotional. Blankets, I only made one, started and finished. Yeah, started and finished and it's a granny square blanket I made for my friend Mina, the knitting expert's baby Nova. And I did it in rainbow colours because her big sister Layla loves a rainbow. And it's just a granny square and it's satisfying and I just did a little bit of double crochet around the edge just to finish it off. And I alternated a rainbow colour with Tin Man and I used Bo Peep from West Yorkshire Spinners, which is a merino nylon blend. Quite a lot of nylon. I think it's 48% nylon, uh, but it's machine washable and it's really soft. And I was very pleased and I gave it to her without the ends woven in because Mina said I could and you don't have to tell me twice. On to garments. Now this is really exciting. Um, <clears throat> must, I should just say there was only one <laughs> adult garment in here and I made the smallest size, which is like a 26 inch bust. So you could argue that's still a child size um, and a uh, 28 inch bust and it was cropped and it was super chunky and the ends still haven't been woven in as far as I'm aware um, and it did, I did actually have to hand it over to Vic because I did the front of this so many times and I just could not get it right I handed it to Vic I was like is it me can you do it if you can do it I don't know anyway Vic finished it off for me so technically I only knit most of that garment might as well talk about that. It's a Zap Tank by Martin Story from Easy Style, designed for Rowan Yarn Super Chunky Big Wool. It's that yarn again. <laughs> um, and the book is great. The Zap uh, Tank can either come full length or cropped. And I did cropped because we needed a quick win and it used less yarn, which is more economical. And also cropped is sewing at the moment and it's really easy to style over trousers and skirts and things. So next I finished um, another Tin Can Knits pattern and I used Starry Night by Joe. I think I used, yeah, I used the Joanna Wood Paint who is now the yarn artist. Uh, she's renamed herself yesterday. I used Starry Night by Van Gogh or Van Gogh um, to make the play date. My little boy got one wear out of it. <laughs> he grew too quickly. He was, he was three months old before I'd finished it. So I got him in it for these photographs and then I passed it to Mina when baby Nova was born, which actually became really fitting because A, it fit her and B, Nova is to do with the star and being new. And so the starry night colourway was just perfect and she looks super cute in it too. And I'm really glad that it went somewhere where it was loved. I started designing a baby vest. I've still got Robin's version on the needles, except for he is far too big for it now. <clears throat> But I made one for a baby that was born at the beginning of last year. And it's a very simple vest. I used Sirdar Snuggly Crofter for this version and it's got a little cable up the front that becomes part of the neckline, which is, I think is super cute. Then another garment for Robin. I made the Chime Cardigan, which is, uh, I did the 9 to 12 month size and it was out of um, Rowan Summerlight DK. It's from a baby book by Martin Story, Bloom Book 3, I want to say. 
Um, and there's patterns for mum and baby, but they only go up to nine to 12 months, which is a real pity because I'd love to make this again for him. He looks super cute in it. I used a kind of mustardy gold colour and a navy blue. And yeah, you see from the pictures. It took me a while to get the buttons. Um, I had to source just the right ones. I wanted the ones with like the, the anchors on. I knew exactly what I wanted. And then I knit two flaxes. So the first one I started in August and I finished it in a week. Um, and that's because I was teaching a top-down sweater course and I was using, if you're ready, the Tin Can Knits Flax Pattern, which is a free pattern designed to teach people things about knitting and you can download it on their website and it goes from 0 to 6 months to 5XL adult and it's brilliant. Um, so I cast it on with my students, uh, so they cast on the baby size and I cast on size 3. Um, because in the course we just go down to splitting for the sleeves and starting a bit of the body um, so that they've done all the tricky bits. And I finished it within a week, love it. Uh, and then it was on display in the window for a while and then I taught the course again. I taught it, was it December or November? End of November I taught this one I think and so I cast on another one. And I did actually finish it. I finished it in time for Christmas except for I made a mistake. Wrong needles. <laughs> I, you're meant to, after you've done the ribbing for the neck band, you're meant to change needles and size up. And I forgot. So I ripped all the way back to the neck band. This is during class. And then knit it again on the same needles. So at that point, I just thought, I'll blow this. He could just wear it. And it is slightly stuck. <laughs> but it fits and it looks cute. So both of these have been done in the Rowan Superwash Merino worsted colourway. So there you have it folks, a whistle stop tour of the 39 projects that I have finished this year. I'm not surprised there are so many socks, um, there are going to be lots more socks in my future. Uh, if you watched my vlogmas, vlogmas you'll know this already but I am planning to work my way through my sock pattern books that I have this year. I'm not sure exactly when it's going to start. The, there are some absolute faves in there the flax i don't know why i was so late to the party and hadn't done it because they're amazing the penny gloves are just brilliant um <clears throat> and obviously my own hat designs i'm pretty chuffed with as well so do watch out for those when i eventually release them what did you make in 2022 i have never finished so many things and you could argue that the hats that only take me an hour each to make is a bit of a swizz however their finishes they count I'd love to know what your favourite projects from 2022 are. What's the thing that you're most proud of finishing? Is there anything that's just proven to be your nemesis and you're still carrying over into 2023? What plans do you have for making for 2023? I have got the cast on itch at the moment. Um, it won't surprise you to hear that I've cast on yet another pair of penny gloves. Um, and I've also got a garment for me this time on the needles as well. Let me know below. I'd love to hear from you. Happy New Year, welcome to 2023, and thanks for coming back again to watch Tales from the Midnight Diary. Mwah. Bye.